Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe. But today we have a very special guest host. Her name is Shireen Richter, all the way from South Africa. Uh, Shireen is a laughter professor in South Africa, and she is putting together a book called Expert Mavericks. And she's interviewing some uh, high profile people from South Africa who have a lot to share in regards to what it uh, is to be successful and what you need to do to have success and happiness in your life. So really uh, looking forward to hearing those South African accents and hearing from all these guest experts that she is going to interview. So take it away, Shuri. I'm Shireen Richter, laughter and happiness professor. Today we have Janine Hills, one of our expert mavericks for our book, Expert Mavericks. Janine Hills is founder and CEO of Vuma Reputation Management. She has a passion for integrity and trust in business relationships. And that was the foundation in which she launched Vuma Reputation Management in 2005. Janine's knowledge, skill, intricate understanding of reputation management across various sectors has brought her more than a dozen awards, nominations and honours over the past decade in the fields of entrepreneurship, women empowerment and leadership. Her list of accolades is a page long. In font I can barely read. (laughs) Janine, welcome. It's an honour and privilege to be able to interview you today and to chat about your journey as becoming an expert maverick. Thank you, privilege. Janine, what is an expert maverick to you? What does it mean to you and and why why are you an expert in your field? I think it's about innovation. I think the market constantly around the world needs innovators and innovators need to be pushing the boundaries. And if you keep keeping the market the same way, then you're never going to discover the new boundaries of what people are capable of doing. And so as you have businesses growing, as you have corporates growing, as you have countries growing, diversity of ways of communication are changing. So that's where the founding concept of reputation management has really come to fall in the last 10 years. In fact, it's really on, only in cutting edge around the world in the last five to six years that it's, it needs to come to its fall and you need innovators to bring that to, to happen. And you've really been a maverick in many fields. You're one of those exceptional women that everything you've done, you've really become an expert in. So... When you started Vuma, that really wasn't the beginning of your journey. Mm. Do you want to take us back a little bit to the beginning and how you identified the need for such such an organization to provide such a service? Take us back a little bit. Give us a little bit of background. What made you see this need in organization and industry? I think it goes right back to my childhood. You know, it goes right back to your upbringing. You look at how people communicate within a family. You see how people communicate at business and at government level and and how they are as people in a community. And you can see our gaps. And if we look at South Africa particularly, and we look at Africa particularly, we've got a lot to learn. But at the heart of it, we're actually very good storytellers. Yes. So how do we unlock that and bring that into our world, into the business world, and how do we build a brand like a brand South Africa or a Kenya brand or an Rwanda brand? Or how do we harness that together? Why? Because we all want to work together. And the value of a brand adds value to its community because you can put a higher price to a brand. We know that we see it with Starbucks. You put a plain cup next to it with a coffee inside. You can charge $1. You charge with a a Starbucks brand on it. You can charge $3. And you open a Starbucks in South Africa and you have people queuing for three hours outside. Exactly. So the power of the brand is very important, but where reputation management comes in is about what people's perception is. So you can't just build a brand through a logo and through advertising. Mm -hmm. One has to engage with various communities. So that means you've got to understand 
stakeholders. So at a very early age, believe it or not, I was learning in, to, to, in a community with my father my, at a very early age, at the age of 13, I was helping run my father's business. And so we were a very poor family and, and to be able to go on a couple of holidays or take some time out, we used to sell fish. As in my dad used to be a deep sea diver and he used to go and shoot the fish and those were the days where the fish were size of bigger the size of men. Those you know, were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> you don't see fish the size of that. And I used to sell them, believe it or not. That was I learned how to sell. So in the early days it was about understanding how you could work with communities from street level right the way up to chairman level and I think it was one of the greatest gifts my father ever gave me was to have that personal confidence that I am the same as everyone else I might not have the same education as everybody else but I have got to learn how to communicate my abilities and my needs and my requirements to that next person. So I started seeing the importance of engagement at community level at a very early age. And as a woman, I think it can be very difficult. Many women have the imposter syndrome or we feel we're not good enough, even going all the way up to board level. And you've achieved an incredible amount coming from, as you said, you started in a poor, but you had a poor upbringing. You are chair of many organizations. You are involved in incredible leadership forums and and the development of women. Um, your journey wasn't an easy journey to get to no. to to where you are today. Mm. And mm. and before we started the interview, mm. you mentioned um, your education has been in real life, in mm. in being out and really seeing and learning firsthand mm -hmm. and that's sometimes the best education that we can get. I think, you know, one never understands right in the early days why one has certain upbringings or why you go through certain journeys. But as I've got slightly older, um, I've begun to be able to look back and say, at every turn where I've been, I've added value to my career and to the job that I'm able to do. So no matter where I've been able to be placed, all those learnings have come with me. So whether it's been in the hotel industry, for 10 years in the hotel industry, now that is a business where you learn to serve. Yes. You learn to serve from the bottom up. So the greatest gift a leader can have is to have the ability to be able to serve. And when a leader begins to realize that you serve, you, you actually do serve, like Mandela said, you serve from behind. Yes. It's, you know, it's easy to say in words, but when a leader really ab is able to enact that and feel that, then you lead easier because you don't mind serving a cup of tea. As a woman, that's one of the big issues that a lot of female leaders have got a big issue yes. with. Yes, serving tea, doing the menial things that they think actually exactly. make them feel less than. I don't have an issue with that because it gives me an opportunity to enact with the individual because I know who I am. So I, I, I didn't quite know who I was for a long time and, 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 I, and I felt very defensive about who I was as an individual. So I had to learn to understand myself through a journey. And I think as long as you're prepared to ask yourself those tough questions, who am I and where am I going? That self-doubt, I wanted that self-doubt to be removed. You know how we, we often doubt ourselves with everything and, and, and I realized I needed to get that out of my system to build that absolute inner confidence and unfortunately I was hijacked a second time and um, I uh, was in the middle of the launch for ebucks, ebucks.com at the time and read one of those Shirley MacLaine books on the Camino over a, over a weekend, put it on the desk of Michael Yudan who's the, the, you know, the previous now CEO of F&B, put it on his desk and said I need to leave within a week. Just, so for people who don't know, like me, tell me what the Camino is. So the Camino is an 850 kilometer walk across the northern part of Spain. And you complete it in a 32 day period. Wow. Yeah. So your average backpack is you carry six kilograms and it's, you know, two little tracksuit pants, t-shirt, track shirt. Yes. And that's it. And do you go on your own with on people? Your own. On, your, on own. your own. You're never really alone because you meditate and you're walking, but you're walking from six o'clock in the morning to six o'clock to seven o'clock at night. But it's the most incredible, freeing period of my time that I ever had where I really, I spoke with God. 
um, and to me I found myself and for me that was one of the most um, engaging processes for me that I don't have to rely on other people to find who I am and through that it gave me my inner confidence that I'd lacked for so many years not everybody knew about it but that shows up in your defensiveness and your mm. aggression mm. and all those kind of things that I would have come out that I needed to deal with and I must be honest with you it was one of the greatest um, personal gifts I could have given to myself incredible incredible journey and mm. something that so many of us need in this busy world there's just so much noise going on that it's very hard to mm. sometimes hear yourself think mm. For other women out there who have self-doubt, who don't believe in themselves enough, what would you say to them? What well, advice would you give them? How do you find that? You without know, I would never give advice on something like that. You know, to be very honest with you, um, I think each one of us get to a stage in our lives. We all we all have the answers. We all get to that stage where we just need to trust ourselves to do it. Um, and I think you often at a crossroads in your life where you don't know which way to go and I think we have to learn to trust our gut and to really listen to ourselves and, and at that stage when I made the decision I could have lost my job it was one of the greatest opportunities of launching you know a massive dot, dot com which is a huge success you know in Africa mm -hmm. and around the world in fact eBucks is one of the leading loyalty programs around the world. Tell us about eBucks, what is eBucks? So eBucks is a, um, what actually it was, it was the e-commerce initiative for the first rank group which is a listed company of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and um, and one of the, 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 the sort of one of the, certainly one of the backbones of the South African and African um, industry is the banking side of things and it's the banking as well as the, the, the insurance infrastructure but they never had an e-commerce initiative and they really needed to, to, to leapfrog innovate into the new way of working and they hadn't been able to get there so they they selected a select team through uh, a careful process and there were 15 of us and um, I was the fifth employee that came into the team and they headhunted us very carefully and very selectively um, and we had to build this in a hundred days in a hundred days we brought to market for the first Rand group, the e-commerce initiative. An incredible achievement. They were four years behind everybody else and we had a catch-up process to do. And it took us three years to really segment that and own that in the marketplace. And today, I must say, I'm very proud to have been one of the founder members of creating and building something from scratch um, for the first rank group. An incredible accomplishment and and the next part of your, well certainly you said the first part was in the hotel industry being serviced. What did you take from launching eBucks and being part of such an amazing initiative? I think the days of working with Sol Kersner, um, you know, the style, the pizzazz, the size, the sheer numbers. Yes. You know, when you work with Sol, you work with the B, big. you know, it's big, big, you know, bigger, better, big, big, you know, everything's bigger than better and that was able I was able to bring that into banking so so when I landed up working in banking banking was boring I mean I was horrified that now how am I going to make banking sexy and how do you bring banking to the people so when you look at all the innovation that's been done in First National Bank now today all that innovation we did 18 years ago all that work was being done then and it all started, it, that was the platform. That was the that platform, it correct. And all the communications, pressure. all the PR, all the initiatives, all the um, the SIM cards, the cell phone agreements, all was all done then. Uh, that's how long it takes to innovate. Yes. And and I think Sol's, um, you know, at the age of 19, I watched him. And, and he really, really uh, launched the Wild Coast Suns uh, pink party with them with these elephants with pink toenails um, but as a youngster <laughs> watching pink toenails watching these things was unbelievable because it showed you that everything is possible you can get creative you can you can really use a limited budget and push yourself to be dynamic and think uniquely but as long as you understand your audience listen to the customer and be creative at the same time I think that's a beautiful message anything is possible absolutely and in the world today as you are saying, with innovation and where companies are moving things that you never thought were going to be possible are becoming possible for us 
things that were in sci-fi movies are now real and 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 here yeah. was there ever a point in your life where you were at a crossroads and you chose one path and and now looking back you maybe should have chosen another path you have regrets about it or it was the best decision did you ever get to a pivotal point or time in your career work-wise very much so you know i've been offered many jobs around the world um, in fact only in this last month have i been going through analyzing you know where where and what and could I have done things differently? So it's been an interesting introspective time for me personally the last the last months. And I'd been offered jobs in the States, um, and job, offered two jobs in the UK with Vodafone, and uh, as well as Australia to work for BT. So yes, in the last month, certainly, I think I, I've looked at a lot of, I've been through quite a lot of introspection. Um, uh, I think you get to that stage when you get to 50 where you start saying, could I have done certain things better? Um, we, we could I have improved on? And I, I, I find that very healthy, to be honest with you. Um, I've done that since the age of 25, where I looked at myself and didn't like what I was and, and made sure um, along that journey, um, I was always very conscious of improving myself and making sure I was a better person. Um, and it was interesting through a job office in the States um, over the years, I turned those down, job office in the UK, in fact with Vodafone UK, job was interesting across the, Australia, BT, never took those. And I thought, I wonder where I would be today if I had gone there. But there's a very good reason why I have my feet firmly in Africa. Tell us. Um, and having just been appointed onto the Brand South Africa board. Yes, we're going to um, get there. I want to hear all about that. That just reaffirms it for me. You know, I think that again, when I was doing the introspection, it, it reaffirms. Having worked in Brand South Africa, it, it just reminds me that I love this country. I love Africa. I am African. And um, my, I have an important role to play. And personally, that role is to empower, to bring out the best in people, to create opportunities and to get people to see their personal vision and to get them to achieve the best that they can of what they do. Um, in and that's really what you're doing at Vuma Reputation Management. Exactly. Whether it be in the training side of things and everything we do, we teach. So whether it's in the academy, whether it's in PR, crisis management, stakeholder management, or overall in a brand, it's building companies, building nations, building communities, and building countries. Which is an incredible privilege to be able to have the power to change so many lives, improve so many reputation situations. Tell us about Brand SA. That's a, a huge feather in your cap and really something you should be very proud of to be able to make a difference to the reputation of South Africa around the world. Look, they've got an incredible team. And I think I was very fortunate to work with them two years ago. You know, I had stepped what in. What is Brand SA? So Brand, South don't know. so Brand South Africa actually works there. You don't see them. They're in the invisible elves, actually. They're the <laughs> invisible elves okay. that you don't really see because they are South Africa. So when you go to World Economic Forum and you see all the South African flags there and you see the ministers there and you see the president there, you see business people. Well, everybody's got their briefing documents. They've, got, they've all been briefed beforehand. The flag, all the teams before, that's all the brand South Africa team. Okay. So they make things happen for us on political stages. So wherever the ministers and wherever our ambassadors are going, they're meeting business people around the world to represent South Africa in a positive way or in a challenging way that we need to discuss things, the Moody's ratings, the S&P ratings, whatever it might be, that's all Brand South Africa facilitating a lot of those positioning platforms. And that's really vital for our country, for our economy, for the growth of our economy, for international investment. So where do you fit in? What is your role as the little elf? So I think the, the key thing is to support the existing team. Um, and then too, we've got a strategic session coming up um, and, and to really add value from a diversity point of view and, and having been, you know, having played a, an important role in Mandela's funeral, you know, um, it was a, a privilege as part of Brand South Africa to work with him at the time. Um, we take the lessons out of, you know, the passing on of Madiba to bring those teachings through to our people um, because 
coordinating a funeral of that size around the world. It's a huge task. We eliminated massive risks for our country, first of all. Um, and secondly, we were able to really showcase our country, what our country is capable of doing when we work together. And I think our role moving forward is to encourage the togetherness. So I really do believe um, our role as reputation management people to, is to bring other departments together to work with Brand South Africa. I see a collaboration between Presidency, GCIS, DIRCO, which is the, you know, the Department of in, you know, in, um, uh, International Relations, yes. and a couple of the other key departments to work together and more collaboratively and then internationally to start playing a role together and and then the key thing is is our communities so how does corporate south africa how do our communities in the rural areas play their role and how do we become the south africans that really own our space instead of this thing called an ex-south african which I yes. fundamentally do not understand yes what is an ex-south african I'd like to do away with that too. <laughs> I agree. And most of the ex-South Africans, when you actually chat to them, really just wish they could come back. So if they were brutally honest, I, I just spent um, a week overseas and most of the Australians that were ex-South Africans were all saying how they really would love to be back here. We do have a beautiful country. What does a reputation management company do? What gave you the idea to start this? And you're one of the top five companies in the world on a global uh, level. What made you decide? How did you get into it? Where did you start? I think it's about listening to the marketplace. That's that's the key thing, is, is looking for an opportunity, reading the market. And there's a, a huge gap between CEOs, the board, and CMOs and communicators from a skill set point of view. And what I mean by that, is there's very few communicators and marketers that sit in the main board. That needs to change. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you can't have chartered accountants who run the businesses communicating with unions and chartered accountants that run companies or engineers that run companies communicating with employees that they don't have the communication skills. So we need to impart those skills. And one way of being able to do that is by putting a reputation management person at board level. That is crucial. And it's certainly moving from Exco to Manco and officially onto board level. And the other side of it is communicating people, communication people as well as marketing people need to upskill themselves in business. It's no longer just the business, the, like the communication speak where we talk about these, you know, these terms and AVEs and this kind of thing about advertising and ABCs and using this. We need to start fundamentally looking how our reputation management impacts on the bottom line. How does it change the behavior of our consumer, our people that are working within the organization, and ultimately having an impact, positive impact on the country? It's almost an imperative for every big organization. And you said you have a training academy, so I'm guessing that you, you offer a full um, offering in terms of training people and advising and guarding. Well, we've, you know, we found that you, if, you, if you're going to be doing the PR side of it, then naturally you can do the stakeholder side. So you can yes. bring in, if, you know, PR is your media side of it. Mm. And then you can bring in government relations and you can bring in business opportunities. So who hasn't met with so-and-so? And you can create business opportunities, collaborative opportunities. So we call it stakeholder management. Then you can do crisis management. A lot of people get confused and say, well, crisis management is reputation management. Not at all. Not the same. Crisis management is when you are in a crisis. Okay. How do we prevent that crisis and how do we get you through that crisis? So we, we have a team that actually manages that and, and works through that journey. So we hope you don't get into a crisis. We need to shut you down pretty quickly if you're in but a crisis. But you can help if you are in a crisis. Exactly. And But how do we turn that into a positive? So I'm sure along the way you've had some really interesting stories. Can you share any of these hmm. stories with us to give us an idea of, of what you actually do, what your day looks like and and how how Janine works and how Vima works and So there are look I would never be able to write a book. <laughs> I'm sure there would be lots so, of interesting so stories that would come out. Very much so. Some yes. real juicy stories. And but obviously confidentiality confidentiality is of paramount importance. Yes, of so and that's what we hold dear. So yes. a lot of people even talk to us without and, you know, signing, signing a, confident, a, a confidentiality. And that's, and that's important. So, 
yes, there have been some situations and, uh, you know, like a mining situation, for example, in South Africa and Africa is filled with mining opportunities. And we got a call one day and out of my kitchen yes. over a weekend and uh, just two days before Human Rights Day, uh, we got a call from the, the MD of the mining company and it's got four and a half thousand miners on that specific site and 71 miners decided not to come up. Now we're talking a year after Marikana, after the death of 34 miners. So there's huge sensitivity Sensi around this. Very much so. And unfortunately we do have a shortage of skills in certain areas. And yes, our police force do need to understand how to deal with these situations in a lot more um, engaging, uh, collaborative manner rather than brute force. And um, in this specific incident, uh, these guys, 20, 40, sorry, 72 of them, refused to come up. Wow. Two and a half kilometers down underground, refused oh gosh, to come up. Oh gosh, that's a crisis. No food, no water, and the management were now, have had enough. But we'd been working with the team for quite a while, and I think that's where the reputation side comes into it. This is not only just about the crisis. Mm. This is about training the executive team, the CEO, how to engage from a union point of view, how to engage from a political point of view, understand the culture, the languages, bring in translators. And the other side of it is make sure that when you're working with the police force and the army to make very sure that you understand the law and your, what space you own. So at any given time, we were guiding them on own your space so that you can communicate directly with your people. The key Incredible. thing is you need a woman's touch in this. And often a woman's touch helps diminish a situation. Yes. The first thing I say to them, Shireen, is send them water, send them food and medical supplies. And the guys couldn't and imagine. And only a woman would come up with that. I mean, unfortunately, that's, that's the way we that's built. Just, and I tell you, the language that came out of that is flowery. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, not a chance. This is not a hotel. Yes. And I said, you do it and you do it now. Because if you want to hit the front pages, you're going to hit the front pages tomorrow morning. You're two days away from Human Rights Day, and if you don't do that, that's what's going to happen because they're aware of it. That's why they've done it. So it's understanding the, the dyn dynamics of why people do things. So it's business psychology. Yes. A lot of what we do is understanding the EQ, the IQ, and why people do certain things at certain times. We sent down, we treated them with respect. These are our fellow South Africans. Don't get upset. Don't rise to the challenge. Rise above the challenge. Treat them with respect and constantly communicate. We had them up within 12 hours. Incredible. And then the negotiation started and with ease. That could sadly have become a very, very dangerous situation. And, and a lot of lives could have been lost. Exactly. We held the police force at the gate. And we Amazing. would not let them on the property because we knew as soon as they were on the property, we unfortunately would have opened fire. They would and have been we, trouble. we need to make very sure at no stage something like that would happen. Absolutely incredible story. And for a person who doesn't know much about a company that does reputation mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. it sounds... There's so much to it. There's so many facets to it. There's so many. There's the psychology. There's understanding business. There's PR. There's media. There's there's actually reputation. If somebody wanted to get into this kind of business, where do they even start? I think the one thing is is really understanding business. So you you do need to have project management skills. You need to have people skills. So yes, communications is a good start, but also project management, business skills, economic skills. You know, you need to understand business. So why do people behave in a certain way? Why does a CEO behave in a certain way? He's got, he's got, he's got pressures on his hands. He's got to turn profits. He's got investors he's got to look after. So understanding the gambit of business and also a president running a country, when one can walk in other people's shoes, you can guide them and you can teach. Yes. So I think that is the key it's thing. Having the understanding. It's having, correct. And, yes. and, and making sure that you have the experience and constantly push yourself to have that experience so that you can teach. If you, you can't sit there on the sideline and teach if you haven't walked in the, the person's shoes. So what would your mantras for life be to other women who look up to you and think, oh my goodness, how do I achieve what Janine has achieved? How do I reach 
the pinnacle of where I want to get. And I'm not saying pinnacle that you're at the end because mm. we're always reaching a point and striving for more. But what advice would you give? What mantras do you live by that help you keep going when you have bad days, when you have days where you feel disillusioned or the crisis becomes overwhelming? And it does. You know, you're yes. absorbing a lot of negative energy and a lot of pressure. But that is part of your business psychology and being able to learn to clear those negative energies. So I do live in a, uh, you know, I've spent time in an ashram. Um, I was very blessed to be at the, the foot of my master. And in that period of time, I was able to learn a lot of the trades of being able to clear the energies for my own good, for my own personal strengths. Um, so, yes, I have mantras that I really, really do live by. And, I mean, only last night um, I, I worked through the night with my spiritual work from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock this morning um, and repeated Om Mani Padme Ong, which is a very important blessing for the universe. But... Was, what does that mean? So it's it's blessings to the universe. Okay. Um, but at the same time, it's covering myself with it with with a protection blanket to, to be able to be able to carry on walking into boardrooms and being able to guide with integrity, knowing that at the end of the day, it's not my ego talking. It's about doing the work that's got to be done with that's honesty and what we're doing. And especially as a woman, we have emotions, we have feelings, and we do tend to take things on. So I think that's very important is to actually try and release that negative energy. And there is so much of it around. People are in fear. Um, we're living in a world where it's very difficult times. What do you do to release your stress? What do you do to fill Janine up? So we are, you're absolutely right, we're living in a very disruptive world and I think that's where we're gearing our business up for the future mm -hmm. because it is, you can see it. Um, the cultural diversity is growing, the, 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 the split, the open communication that's now starting. You know, not only do you have radio, TV, print, online, social media, yes. you now start, it's, it's starting to really fragment. Yes. So, so, so at, at any time we could be touched with, with any kind of crisis, and we need to be able to react to this. But hold ourselves centered and rise above it and be able to distinguish between a crisis and an issue that needs to be dealt with in the most um, balanced way in which you do. Remember, every crisis can be overcome. It's just yes. how we deal with it. So when we work with people, we're quite comfortable. And uh, I tell you, Shireen, it's like a couple of things I sat last night thinking, you know, what do I say to myself to get myself through to be, help, be able to help others, yes. my own team and clients? Um, and it's about going back to your faith. You know, you, you go to shul or you go to the ashram or you go to church. And for those that believe or don't believe, but, but we say we have faith, but we don't. So we, during these troubles and times, we have to dig deep. We must then at those times truly have faith. Or we don't have faith, mm. or we merely are a churchgoer, or we go to shore, or whatever. And I think that's where I'm saying, and it gets us through. Many of my team come and talk to me and ask me, how do you pray? And it's more about giving thanks than asking for what you want. That's beautiful. Gratitude. It's very it, powerful. It, it gets us through a lot. Yes. When we start to become realistic about what's actually going on around mm. us. We have so much mm. to be grateful for. I'm so grateful when I drive in the streets of Johannesburg and the city I live in and what everybody else says about I love living here. I love living in this country. So I believe in the work that I do. The team that I work with, we believe in what we do. And if we didn't, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't do it. And gratitude is powerful to be able exactly. to look at the country we live in, the jobs we have, the people we work with, the things we have in our lives, and and acknowledge the good as opposed to to be negative. Correct. You know, I, I, I you know, people will say to me, the market stuff. The market. I say, whatever comes out of your mouth will manifest. So true that. And as you're saying, it's about being resilient. My dad always said to me, um, somebody said to him, how's business? And he said, business is always the same. Sometimes it comes to you and sometimes you got to look, but it's always the same. And that's essentially what you're saying. It's about putting out positive messages, being positive, taking a real look at where you're at and being grateful for the blessings. Correct. Very much so. So where to from here? You've got big visions and dreams. I do. Tell me where we're going. You know, I think it's about 
I'm building the existing team is, is, is very important and being able to duplicate a lot of what has been created. To me, that is one of the most important things for any leader that you've created a succession plan and created more leaders. And, you know, the saying goes that if you're not a leader until you've created leaders. And, mm -hmm. and I must be very honest, I'm very comfortable saying we've got a really great team of leaders and they've really learned in their space at home and in the work front to become leaders and lead what they've got to do. And that's crucial. And to guide the clients and to work with, to become those leaders that they are, because they are. It's just about taking that sheath off yes. and unraveling yes. that. And, and I really believe, I, I think there's a huge opportunity for, for we are already Africans working in Africa, um, but really franchising the opportunity of rumor reputation management throughout Africa, as well as globally. Um, That's incredible, creating more leaders, empowering correct, people correct. and making differences to, to so many other countries and communities. Correct. You know, what's really come through in the last couple of weeks has been very interesting is a lot of women have been coming through to us because, you know, I sit on the board of International Women's Forum. Yes. And it's an absolute privilege. And a lot of women coming through the ranks are saying, you know, I'm at Exco level. How do I get to Manco? How do I get here? So we've written a course, for example, how do you break through that clutter? Now, I had to do it when I was 25 coming through the ranks. And you had to learn it all yourself? I had to learn. So... One afternoon, I quickly wrote the course for an hour. We tested with four executives. They're absolutely spot on. So it's about listening to the market, listening to what people want, but being real, not too theoretical. Yes. Bringing the balance in and saying, how do you, what are the tricks of the trade and what are the, the human elements of what I can do to own that space? Amazing how relevant you always are in every industry that you've been in. Do you mentor other women? You are involved in, in women's forums. Do you mentor women? Do you have a mentor that helps you currently? What do you feel about mentorship? So my mentor absolutely is my spiritual teacher and my spiritual master, and I've been very blessed to have that for, for 25 years, and it's very dear to me and doesn't leave my, my, my soul and my being for any, you know, any part of the day. Um, and that carries through in our work in everything that we do. The other side of it is, is I can't do my work without bouncing that work off mentors. Remember, as yes. I might be mentoring other people, but actually I'm actually learning a lot from them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it works both ways. So yes, um, interesting enough, what's happened in the last year has been a lot of media learners coming through. So top executives that are in media have been spending confidential time with me. And, and to me, that's a privilege because not only are we building great relationships, we're able to then impart skills and for them to understand the world that we are working in and to also see what is what, what the, where the opportunities are for them and the greatness that they can unravel. And while you were going through this process, your mm. journey that's led you to this point, did you have a role model? Did you have one particular person? You said working with Sal Kersner was incredible. Was there one particular person you learned from um, or value system that you took with you, or was was it many? It actually was many. Um, there really were people from, really, from Sol Kersner to Paul Harris, um, one of the founder members of First Rand. I mean, a man that absolutely leads with grace, with honesty, integrity, the, the innovator of note, Michael Yudan, to the Eleanor Craig, the Eleanor Craig who founded, you know, the cell phone industry, you know, the GSM system that has rocked the world. Yes. Phenomenal leaders that, that shared and imparted so many skills with us as young people coming through the ranks. I'm incredibly and eternally grateful. Um, and those lessons from the Joan Joffies, you know, Wendy Lucas Bull, Wendy Lahabe, Wendy Applebaum. These are mentors, mentors that I can truly say have added incredible integrity to my life. And I'm incredibly grateful. I think a message that I'm getting from this is that for people who are wanting to be mavericks in their field is to try and learn from as many other successful people and take what resonates with you, what will build you and grow you. So before we end, what what's in your heart? Give us um, something, where do you, you see yourself? We, I mean, we know on a global level, but for yourself, um, do you see yourself remaining in South Africa? Do you see yourself, um, 
where where do you where's the future for you as a person in your heart what are your your message for us as a maverick I think it's about maintaining those experiences, those global experiences, um, because we are at the end of the world, supposedly, and the yes. way this map has been designed. I personally would like to turn the map inside out and upside down and flip it the other way around so that South Africa is actually at the top and pretty close to the center of the world is the one thing I'd like to do. So that whoever could help me design that map, I'd be very grateful. And the second part of it is really about being a swallow. I see myself being able to work with people globally at an international level where we're already playing, but sharing and imparting knowledge, creating opportunities together. To me, the new world and the new way of working together, collaboration, 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 and trust and integrity is the one way that's going to help heal the world and heal business and the economics of the structure. It's a globe. magnificent, magnificent message, and not only for business, but for people's lives to live mm. with truth and integrity and honesty and collaboration in whatever people want to do, taking that forward. Thank you for sharing your vision. Thank you for sharing what you've done. I hope that from this journey, people will look at an incredible woman and it will give them the inspiration to know that they too can achieve what you have managed to achieve. Thank you for bringing your light and your power into the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there you have it. What an excellent interview. Thank you to our guest interviewer, Shireen Richter. She's interviewing people for her book, Expert Mavericks, which is going to be released later this year. We're looking forward to more interviews from Shireen. But until then, like and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.